Sponsored by Rabbi Shlemi and Mirla Greenwald. This is a Sikha from Lakuta Sikha, Sikha Likud Gimel, Parsha Shlach, Sikha Aleph. And the topic of the Sikha is that the name of our Parsha is Parsha Shlach. And there are four parts in the Sikha. The Rebbe will, number one, ask how the name Shlach reflects the content of the whole Parsha. Number two, explain what was the chait, the sin of the Meraglim. Number three, based on this, give two answers to the original question about how the name Shlach reflects the content of the whole parsha. And number four, ask and answer a question on a detail of the two answers that then adds more understanding to the two answers. We already spoke many times and other sikhs, that the main content of every sedra, meaning all the parshas in it, so we're looking at it as a parsha being named over here a sedra, and within every parsha there are many sections that we're calling parshas. So we already spoke many times that the main content of every sedra, meaning all of the parshas in the sedra, is hinted to in the name that it's called according to Minne Yisrael, which is Taira, and so too regarding the sedra of this week, which is called Shlach. So from here it's understood that in this name of Shlach is expressed the main point of all the matters spoken about in all of the Parshias in this Sedra. And we have to understand, the point of the idea of Shlach is just a story of the events that happened to the Yidden when they were in the Midbar, the story of the Miraglam. And it's not a mitzvah, that the Yidden were commanded to fulfill. In the Parshish, in this Sedra, that come after the story of the Miraglam, there are mitzvahs, which are for all generations, including the mitzvah of Tzitzis, which is a mitzvah kalalis. It's a general mitzvah, which brings one to remember all 613 mitzvahs. As it's written in the parsha of Tzitzis, or Isam Isai, you will see the Tzitzis, Uzchartem is called mitzvah Hashem, and you'll remember all the mitzvahs of Hashem. And so the question is, how can it be that the idea of Shlach, which is only a story of events that occurred, is more important than the mitzvahs in the Sedra, to the extent that in the name Shlach is expressed the main point of the whole Sedra. Now, even though on a simple level the Sedra is called Shlach, because this word comes at the beginning of the Sedra, but nevertheless, like we said before, since this is the name al so the name reflects the content of the whole Sedra. So in order to answer this question, we're going to go into a side discussion and explain something else. And based on that explanation, we'll be able to come back to our original question and answer it. So this will be understood by first explaining what was the chait, what was the sin of the miraglam. Now simply, their chait was that they came and reported, Ephes ki azaam ayeshevarts, how mighty the people on the land were, v'arim b'tzuris g'delis ma'id, and how mighty the cities were, v'gam yalidei ha'anak rinusham. They also saw the sons of the giants. So simply, that's what it seems was their chait, was their sin, their report about the land of Eretz Yisrael. But l'chayir, it's not understood. They were sent to see esa aritz ma'ihi what type of land it was, and about the people that are living in the land, whether they're mighty, and also about the cities. And in response, they reported, they reported their findings. So why is it considered a chait? And not only shouldn't it be a chait, to the contrary, with this they fulfilled their mission to spy the land. So they actually did exactly what they were told. So not only shouldn't it be a sin, it's a good thing. They were sent on a mission and they fulfilled the mission that they were sent for. And the explanation is, Moshe Rabbeinu sent the Miraglim to find out the easiest way within the rules of nature to conquer its role, and in which place it's best to start the conquering. And the reason he did this is because Hashem doesn't do a miracle for nothing. And so therefore, one must do everything they can in every area within nature, even if ultimately they will need a miracle. Even in such a case where there will certainly be a need for miracle or miracles, a person still has to do everything that they can within nature 
in order to minimize the number of miracles and also the details of the miracles. Even if there'll be less miracles needed, that's not enough. A person has to do everything they can within nature to minimize also the details of the miracles that they will need. So Moshe Rabbeinu only sent the Miraglim to find out the easiest way within the rules of nature to conquer Eretz Yisrael. However, Moshe Rabbeinu was certain that they would go up and conquer the land because that was what Hashem commanded them to do. So obviously they will be able to do it. However, the Miraglim, after describing the Om, Ha'arim, Ve'aretz, the people, the cities, and the land, they came to a conclusion, which was, We're not going to be able to go up and fight the people over there because they are mightier than us. Meaning that because of the difficulties that they saw in conquering the land within the confines of nature, so they concluded, even though Hashem commanded them to do it. And that was their hate, that was their sin. Moshe Rabbeinu did not send them to find out if they could conquer the land. To Moshe Rabbeinu it was clear that they, that they can conquer the land, because that was what Hashem commanded them to do. So certainly they could do it. Moshe Rabbeinu only sent them to find out the best way to conquer the land. And their Averia was, their hate was, that they came to a conclusion that they cannot conquer the land. According to this explanation about the hate of Maraglim, so it's understood that the Hira, the lesson from the story of the Maraglim, which is captured in the word Shlach, the name of our Parsha, is connected to Klaus Atero Mitzvahs. And so therefore it makes sense that our parsha that has it in Mitzvahs and even has the Mitzvah Klaus of Tzitzis is called Shlach. Because in Shlach we have the whole story of the Miraglim and the Hira from the story of the Miraglim is connected to Klaus Atero Mitzvahs. How is it connected to Klaus Atero Mitzvahs? Because it's a Yesaid Ikri. It's a fundamental foundation in the fulfillment of all the mitzvahs, to know that since the mitzvahs are the commands of Hashem, so it's clear that a person is able to fulfill them. Because Hashem only asks us for what we are able to do. So that's a Yisaid Ikri that's connected to Kalalos HaTero Mitzvahs, that a person is able to fulfill the mitzvahs that Hashem commanded him to do. And to add to this point, even a person if they will just speak with sense, they won't command someone to do something if they know the person is unable to fulfill it. And especially if the command is coming from a person who made the mitzvah, the one that they're commanding. Practically what that would be is like a craftsman who makes something. That if a person makes an item to serve a certain purpose, they'll obviously make it in such a way that it could serve that purpose. So then certainly the person will make the person that they're commanding in this case, we'll use the example of a craftsman making an item in such a way that they will be able to fulfill the purpose they were made for. It's just that a person is able to make a miscalculation and they'll make an item that cannot serve the purpose they made it for. But obviously, it was made with the intent and in such a manner that it should be able to serve that purpose. And so certainly by Melech, Malchi, Amlochim, Ve'etz, Mateva, Tzedek, when we're talking about the king of all kings and the essence of good, goodness and righteousness about Hashem, that he won't demand from the Mitzvah, the one that he's commanding, who he made, he's not going to demand from them something that they don't have the ability to fulfill. And by Hashem, there are no miscalculations. So if Hashem is commanding somebody to do something, if Hashem is telling us to do the Mitzvahs, and he made us, then certainly we're able to do them. And in addition, another important Yisaid that's connected to all the Mitzvahs that we learned from Shlach, it's just that after this awareness that we can certainly fulfill any mitzvah, then even regarding mitzvahs, we don't rely on miracles. And this idea that we don't rely on miracles is not just some side detail about how to do the mitzvahs, but rather this itself is an Indian ikri. It's a very important and fundamental point in mitzvahs because the main point of mitzvahs is the point of the mitzvahs is to make a dira for Hashem down here. And so we have to operate within nature in order to make a dira in nature. If we disregard nature and we do the mitzvahs through a miracle, then we're not making a dira for Hashem in nature because nature is not involved in it. And so therefore there must be a shlach v'yasuru, which means an investigation or inspection to know in which way it's possible to do the mitzvah within nature. And so th these ideas are a yasayd ikri in kolos of mitzvahs. Number one, to know and realize 
that a person is able to do all of the mitzvahs because of Hashem commanded us to do it. That means we have the ability to do it. And number two, that it should all be done within the confines of nature because in that way we're able to make a dira betachdeinim within nature. Now we're going to move on to explain why this ayura, that a person has to know that whatever they're commanded to do, they have the ability to do it, and that it should be done within nature. We're going to move on to explain why was it taught specifically by the story of the Miraglim. In theory, it could be taught by any other story. So the explanation is because this ayura is connected to and needed for all mitzvahs, like we explained. So therefore, it's taught by the story of the Miraglim, which is the story of the preparation to enter Eretz Yisrael. Because as we'll explain, entering into Eretz Yisrael is an inning klali in all the mitzvahs. And so since, as we'll see, entering Eretz Yisrael is an inning klali in all the mitzvahs, it's connected to the mitzvahs themselves, therefore we're taught these hayras that are related to the doing of mitzvahs by the story of entering Eretz Yisrael. Because just like before doing mitzvahs, we have to know these two things, that a person is able to do the mitzvahs and to do them within nature. So, so too, before entering Eretz Yisrael, which as we'll see is connected to the whole idea of mitzvahs, we are taught these Hayrais. The explanation of this is as follows. The b- whole being and greatness of Eretz Yisrael is explained in the Pasuk of Eretz Asher Gamer Gamer. Ashana What this Pasuk is saying is that in Eretz Yisrael, the Ashgacha Al Yena, the supervision of Hashem, is in it in a more Pnimi Vigali manner. It's more internal and more revealed than it is in other lands. This means that also in the physical things in Eretz Yisrael, Elokus, godliness, is felt in a more revealed way. Now, according to this, it's understood that drawing down Elokus into something physical is similar to entering Eretz Yisrael. Because when you're drawing Elokus down into something physical, you have Elokus coming into something physical, and that's what Eretz Yisrael is. It's where Elokus is found in a more pnimi and godly manner in the physical than it is in other lands. So what this is saying is that the fulfillment of each and every mitzvah is similar to entering Eretz Yisrael. Because fulfilling mitzvahs is to draw down Elokus in the physical world in order to make a dir le and therefore before entering Eretz Yisrael, which is the idea of doing mitzvahs, bringing Elokus into the physical world, before entering Eretz Yisrael, we're taught this important Torah that's connected to all of the mitzvahs, that a person has to know that they're able to do the mitzvahs and that they should do it within nature in order to make a dir le yizbarach in this world, which is a world of nature. According to what we just explained, that entering Eretz Yisrael is like the idea of doing a mitzvah, so we have another answer to our original question about how to shlach, capture it in the name, how does it express something that's related to mitzvahs and even to the mitzvah of tzitzis, which is a general mitzvah. So another heira klalis from shlach gamer or yesuru gamer that you have to send miraglim and check out the land before entering the land, which is the idea of checking out the mitzvah, before doing the mitzvah. So we have now another era of Klaudus from Shlach Gamer V'Yesuru Gamer that's connected to all mitzvahs. And that is that before each and every mitzvah, it's incumbent on the person to think about the meaning of the mitzvah they are about to fulfill. Just like Shlach V'Yesuru, before entering Eretz Yisrael, look at what it is, inspect what it is that you're about to do. And and when we say to inspect and look at the meaning, it's not just about the individual meaning of that particular mitzvah, but rather also in the general meaning and purpose that's shared in all mitzvahs. And that is that the person is going to fulfill the will of Hashem. And like we say in the bracha before all mitzvahs, Asher Kedishanavim Mitzvahis of Itzivanu, meaning that through fulfilling the mitzvah, one becomes holy and fulfills what Hashem commanded. And through doing this, one becomes united with Hashem. Like we know that the word mitzvah comes from the word Tzav Savachibur, to be connected and attached. And we make this bracha of Asher Kedushan of Mitzvah of Itzivanu before fulfilling the mitzvah. In order to show that before doing the mitzvah, a person must think about the general meaning and purpose of all the mitzvahs. And we learn that from the Maraglim, that first they had to inspect the Yisru, the land of Eretz Yisrael, which is like the doing of the mitzvah, before actually entering the land, before the actual doing of the mitzvah. And similarly, regarding learning Torah, that one must make the bracha, that reminds one in the bracha, that it's Hashem's Torah, Torah say, and that it's in the present tense. 
It says, Nice in Atayra. Because Bukhal Yayim Yu Binecha Kechadashim, a person has to do all of this before learning the Tayra. And we learned that out of Shlach, that before entering Eretz Yisrael, there has to be the inspection of Eretz Yisrael. And so too, before doing a mitzvah, a person has to inspect, a person has to understand and recognize and realize and appreciate what it is they're, they're about to do. However, according to this, that the idea of shlach is in the in Akuda Yesaidis, it's a fundamental point of all mitzvahs, so then we have to understand, on the, on the other hand, there's a question that now comes up. Since the idea of shlach gamer, the Yesur Eretz Kanan, has a reis ikrius v'yesaidis, it has fundamental and very important lessons, in a person's Aved Hashem, then it's something which is necessary. It's not optional. It's necessary. It's required. So why did Hashem leave it up to the decision of Moshe? This whole shlach, the whole story of shlach, which we're saying is so important. It's so important that there should be a shlach. It's so important to know that you're able to do what Hashem commands you to do. It's so important to know that it should be done within nature. It's so important to know that before doing a mitzvah, you have to think about what you're going to do. So then why did Hashem leave the whole thing up to the decision of Moshe? By saying, Shlach lecha. And Rashi tells us it means, L'daytcha. It's something you're going to decide to do. Ani, I, Hashem said, Eini mitzavah lecha. I am not commanding you to do this. In Tirzah, if you want to do it, Shlach, then send them. Why was this left up to Moshe Rabbeinu's decision? It should have been a command by Hashem. So this will be understood based on what we explained earlier, that the purpose of fulfilling Torah mitzvahs is to draw down a lakus in physical matters and in the way the Medrash says regarding Matan Torah that tachtonim yalu yenim, that the physical world should go up and become a godly world. In our context, the difference between Elyon and Tachtin, which would be between Hashem, the Creator, and the world, which is a creation, is that the Creator is a mashpia, and the creation is a makabal. Hashem gives to the world a creation on its own has no existence, and it is makabal its existence from the Creator who is the mashpia. And since the idea of Matan Teira is that the Tachtun should rise to the level of the Elyon, so it's understood that the meaning of this rising, what is it reflected in, is that the Tachtun should rise to become a mashpia just like the Elyon. And like Rizal say, that Nasa Shutuf La Kodesh Baruch Hu Bereshis. And Rizal also say about Torah, that said about mitzvahs, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu Chayich Va'emer Nitzchuni Bonai, Nitzchuni Bonai. Hashem smiled and says, you were victorious over me, my sons, you were victorious over me, my sons. Which is the true idea of a Shutuf. Because in a Shutfus, in a partnership, the way it works is that sometimes one Shutuf wins and sometimes the other one does. So we see that the goal is that a person should become a shutuf to Hashem through fulfilling the mitzvahs, and also a shutuf to Hashem when it comes to learning Torah. So according to this, it's understood why these hayrois weren't said as a command, even though they are necessary. Because when a person fulfills a command of Hashem, then even though they rise up through this, but nevertheless, they don't rise up to the full level of a mashbiah which is the level of al like we said. Because ultimately, the person is just fulfilling a command which is also giving them the strength from the Creator. So they're a makabal. They're being told what to do and they're getting the strength to do it. So meaning that the person is still somewhat a makabal from the Creator. Whereas when it's done in a way of ledaitoch, that the person is fulfilling it on their own and with their own strength, so then the person rises to be on the level of mashpia, because the person is doing it on their own. It's what they're deciding to do. They're not a makabal. They're creating this new thing that they're doing. And according to this, we can understand in greater depth the reason the story of the Miraglam comes before the mitzvahs. Now we can add even more understanding to this. Because not only are the Heirais and Shlach, Heirais Kalaliyais, like we said, that are relevant to the whole of Tyre mitzvahs, but also the manner in which these Heirais are taught that it's in a way that it was left up to Meish Rabbeinu, who teaches us the purpose and intent of Torah mitzvahs, which is the to become a mashpia. 
and not to do it because one is commanded, but it should come from the person's own decision.